They might not know what they're doing, but they're praising them. I'm not going to let Mount Hood outpraise me this morning. Anyways, get your seat. Get your Bible. Can we thank the worship team? Thank you, worship team. I mean, can we thank them? Can we thank them? Come on. Amen. We're starting out the year. Transitions are always a little bit tough. And uh, people getting sick and life happening and transitions and Christmas. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. But transitions can be difficult. Amen. Anybody with me? Just me and David. All right, cool, bro. I'm just going to preach to you this morning. Come on, where are you at? Where's my, where's my people at? There we go. There we go. We're alive. Church is alive. Amen. Church is full of life. Why? Because we've been saved. Anybody been saved? Woo! No, but seriously, anybody been saved? Anybody saved? Anybody, anybody ever been healed? Come on, four of us. All right. Is that it? Really? We need some miracles. That's why I wore my sweatshirt. It's my power it's my power sweatshirt. I'm just going to rip it off and start throwing it on people like Peter. And uh, I'm just joking. Don't worry. There's nothing underneath this. I'm an old man now officially. I don't wear any undershirts. It's just, it's just sweaters. Now, if the V-neck gets real deep, it gets real awkward. But listen, it's my Italian roots. The old Italian grandpas just wear that wool sweater with nothing underneath it. And uh, I'm just thankful for merino wool. Amen. The old itchy wool. Anyways, I've lost everybody. Does anybody have a Bible? Does anybody have a Bible? Come on. It's so good. I love Jesus. Anybody love Jesus? Amen. Sometimes I feel like a stand-up comedian up here. I'm like, hey, anybody know Jesus? All right. Well, uh, no. I'm, I'm here to preach the gospel. Amen. Um, but, but, <laughs> nothing but, but I, uh, I, I, I love Jesus. I love being a Christian. Anybody love being a Christian? Okay. Because Jesus is a giver. That's what's so cool about, I, I love my job because Jesus is a giver. Like, I love being a Christian because Jesus is a giver. He's not a taker, he's a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. And so what's so cool is all of us can invite people to church and be a part of this church knowing that the number one thing is that God's a giver. God wants to bless you, he does. He wants to save you, he wants to touch you, he wants to heal you, he wants to speak to you. All of those are gifts from God paid for at the cross. It's not a rent-to-own program. I don't know if anyone's ever rented to own in this room. I, I, no judgment because I've, I've done a lot of crazy, bad financial decisions in my life. Um, but I, I, when you look into the payment plans, like you end up paying like 50 grand for a TV. You know, it's like, how, why, who would do that? You know, hey, buy this TV for $100 a month. It's like for five years. This is not a rent-to-own plan. This is not a payment, you know, de, de, you know delay, you know, okay, well, just come here, be Christian, and then you can... Oh, me, you're the, the rest. And it's all of it is, all of it is a gift. All of it is 100% a gift. And in response, we, we move by faith in response to God. But God is, God is, God is the biggest giver of anyone. Amen. And uh, looking at miracles, a couple more weeks here. I want to go back. Um, sometimes you got to go back. Amen. Sometimes you got to go back on how it started. So we've been journeying with the miracles of Jesus, and, and I found myself, okay, God, what else do you, what, there's a couple more here, there's a couple more. And I had a couple other things God was speaking to me about. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll dig into that. We'll look at that and looking at the miracles of Jesus. And, and, and it was sort of like just go back to how it started. Go back to how it started. So I want to look at the first miracle of Jesus. Is that okay? All right, cool. Let's go to John chapter 2. Now, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm looking at the NLT this morning. Now, I'm making a transition from New King James here preaching, which is very difficult. It might, it might only last for one Sunday. So uh, enjoy me reading from the NLT. My personal devotions right now is through the NLT, but my preaching is usually from the N, 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 K, N, K, J, v, the New King James, because that's what my scriptures are memorized in. That's, that's where the study is in. But I'm switching trying to read from the NLT. We did a uh, Heart for the House um, offering. And uh, we, 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 anybody that was given $1,000, we gave uh, some boxes away. I think we got them back here. Does the mic still work? Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Okay. Let me think back here. We, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm just going to get some coffee. Hey, just talk to your neighbor. Just talk to your neighbor. Here we go. Here's the, here's the boxes. Here's the boxes. So we got... I'll give a couple of these. This is like $1,000. So some of you gave $1,000 and we gave you these. I'm going to give a couple of these away today um, because, because 
Now, now don't be like that one parable. Some of you are like, what? I gave it those. Remember, some came late. Okay. <laughs> some have been working in the field all day. Don't make me switch my sermon. All right. So this is beautiful. This is a little gift. This is, I don't, I know. So we got the Bible. We got a notebook. And we got a pen. Okay. So some of you, God's going to birth a prayer life in this morning. Because he's good. He's a giver. And then we're just going to give a couple of these away. Or maybe not. <laughs> I'll see how much you amen the message. I'm just joking. Just relax. Just relax. We're talking about the first miracle of Jesus. There's something. Where's my theologians at? Okay. Just me and David and, and Jim. Okay. Let's talk to David here. Just, just become a theologian today. What's cool about Christianity is you can fake it till you make it. There's, so, <laughs> like, theologian, that's me. That's me. Yeah, yeah, I know about the Bible. Theology is just the study of God, okay. Theos, just that's it. Is, is there's something about what? The law of first mention. Okay, why don't you come up here and talk about the law of first I'm just joking. All right. The law of first, <laughs> he's like, the law of first mention. I want to look, I believe that God's led me to talk about the first miracle because there's something to the first. Amen. Look at that balcony. This is looking beautiful up there. I can't quite see everybody because of the glory. The glory got thick, the button got stuck, and the glory just came out fully this morning. It's beautiful. Um, the first mention, the first miracle of Jesus, John chapter 2 out of the NLT. Here we go. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Now remember, Jesus hasn't done any miracles. The wine supply... Ran out. Oh, no. <laughs> Few people have been in lockdown too long. We're like, I can, I can relate. Don't get caught too much up on the wine. Get, get into the metaphor here. But th this, this is the first miracle of Jesus. <laughs> the, the, the wine supply ran out during the festivities. So Jesus' mother told them they have no more wine. I love moms, right? I love moms. They have degrees in stating the obvious, amen? I love it. Drive safe. Okay, mom. Dear woman, that's not our problem. Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. But, but his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. I, th I thought Jesus said he, he wasn't going to do it. Well, he, did, he didn't say he wasn't going to do it. He just said his time hasn't come. He said, fill the, water, fill, fill the jars with water. When, when the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of the ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though, of course, the servants knew. Where are my servants? Where are my servants? There's some things that only you know about this church. There's some things that only, if you're a servant in your marriage, there's some things that you know that, that makes things work. If you're not a servant, there's still some mysteries to how things work. And you might be ever learning your entire life until you become a servant. And you truly get a behind the scenes view on how things work. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. I mean, what is this? This is, like H, this is like a Food Network show. This is, welcome to the first miracle of Jesus. But you've kept the best until now. This miraculous sign, wine, at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus, this is John speaking, this is the first time Jesus reveals his glory. Through a food miracle, and his disciples believed in him. And after the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, who didn't believe. I love Jesus because he's cool with awkward. Like Jesus just turned water to wine, annoyed probably every religious person, brings his disciples who just believed in him. So they're like, whoa, they're pumped up. And then James's brother and his brothers and his sister who didn't believe until after the cross. So you got James the just there going, I don't know what that was. That was weird. 
and he shouldn't have done it or whatever. I don't know. Who, what happened? But they're all hanging out together. I love, that's what church is. Some of you are just starting to believe. Some of you are like, nah. Some of you are like, this is whack. Some of you are caught up. In but the church has everybody. I love it. And Jesus is like, come on. Come to me. If you're thirsty, if you're hungry, you're, 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 you're burdened. Everybody. Jesus is inclusive to everybody. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love church. I love you. Let's get into the word this morning. I want, I want to talk about this morning the miracle of pray and obey. I want to talk about prayer this morning. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to, to pray like you've never prayed before? But I mean genuinely. I, I, I just sense this year, maybe I should say this for the end because it's a little prophetic. I just sense that God is not necessarily going to do something radically new in your life. He's just going to establish something that's never been established. So a lot of us are trying to have faith, but we really don't have it. Some of us are trying to be thankful, but we, there's a difference between trying to be thankful and like, oh, being thankful. There's a difference between trying to have faith and like, Whoa! Move some mountains. I mean, there's a difference between believing for the gift of healing and just whoo, operating in the gift of healing. There's, there's a difference. But there's a difference between trying to lead and leading. I just, I just said that this season, God is going to establish what you have tried to see established in your life. So a man or woman falls seven times. The struggle is there, but there is a time where God will put your feet and He will found them on the rock, and you will find yourself established. Amen. And so, anyways, all right, all right. And, and prayer. Prayer is going to be one of those things where you're not going to try to pray. You're going to find yourself praying. You're going to find yourself, whoo, heaven coming to your earth. Amen. All right, let's, let's look at this this morning. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for church. We thank you, God, that we can gather. Lord, we thank you that our church has an address on it. It's not a spiritual concept. We thank you for the church, but we thank you for the local church, our church. God, we thank you for our church, our friendships, our families. As Jared was saying, our, our, our family, our community. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word establishes all things. God, we thank you that in the beginning was the word. We thank you for your word that it's the lamp, it's the light unto our path. God, in this season, we don't have to live in chaos or obscurity, Lord, or not having things clear. Lord, we can, we can live with clarity because of the word of God that sheds light into our path today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. All right, I'm a praying person. Now, that's not here to, that's, you're not here to brag. I'm, I'm here to, to tell you it's not fair. It's not fair. My mom's a praying person, and so she just put me into youth with a mission in eighth grade. So I found myself at 14 in Mexico on a mission trip. I didn't ask. Old school parenting was they didn't ask you. It might come across like a question, like, hey, it's youth tonight. Yeah, I'm not going. No, that wasn't a question. You're going. It, parenting, it's too many questions now. I don't know. They just didn't feel like going. Excuse me, mom and dad. They need to go until they're 18. This is my roof. That sounds a little old school. I, I, I got a little old school message today. Is that all right? I understand we don't want to be like the old school parents and we want to be cool parents. But are we willing to lose our children because we need to be cool parents? I, I don't care about cool parenting. Kids need parents. So my mom said, you're going to the mission field. Why? Because American children live in a bubble. I'm sorry, but it's true. Is anybody ready for the truth this morning? I'm sorry, but we're the wealthiest generation on the planet. So sometimes our problems do not have perspective. You got to go to the third world, and you go to the third world, and you're like, oh, I'm a spoiled, unthankful brat who sat at the pool in California, jealous of the, my friend's pool because it was bigger. That's not real life. <laughs> so you go to Mexico, and you're like, oh, and you meet Jesus. Why? Because all my problems weren't real problems. Anyways, um, so it's not fair because my mom put me in youth with a mission and my leaders didn't ask me if I wanted to pray. <laughs> they come in and I know I, we try to wake, even this morning, we try to, this morning, we try to wake up our kids trying to be cool parents. You know, just, you know, because my mom, you know, they come in, bam, hit the lights, rise and shine and give God some glory, glory. <laughs> Rise and shine, early bird gets the worm. Ha! Die! 
right? You're like, mom, you know? And then if, if your mom's a poker, you know, I know, your mom's like, stop it! Huh? Your mom's not a poker? Okay. So you're like, you want to be a cool parent, you're like, you know, can we have like low light that slowly comes up, you know, with river music, you know, that, that comes on and you wake your kids up, whatever. They come in with the trumpets, man. We literally had youth mission. <laughs> God's been awake. He's waiting for you. Let's go, let's go. They don't give you time. They don't, there's no snooze button in YWAM. Poof. All of a sudden you're like, okay, pray. He's like, hallelujah, Jesus, Lord Jesus. <laughs> like, that's it. You're praying outside. I, I think I, I walk and pray. I'm not joking. I think I walk and pray because they made me, like, walk and pray. I think I'm a pacer because my, my leaders are like, get outside and walk with Jesus. Because this doesn't work. You you this. And this doesn't work. Because then it's like, Lord, I just thank you for everything. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. They're like, get outside and walk. I'm like, Jesus, hallelujah. So I'm a pacer, I think, because of my abusive spiritual leaders, amen, when I was young. And anyways, so I prayed. I prayed. And then I found out about a prayer chain. I'm like, Phew. so I'm outside. I'm, I'm walking and I'm praying. And, and, and I get that down. And now you, what, what's a prayer chain? Well, prayer chain is we all going to take different, like, t- links, links of a chain. And I, for some reason, I'd always get, like, two in the morning or three in the morning. I'm like, you want me to wake up? You want me to go to sleep, which is really difficult. My mom told me I need to get seven hours of unbroken sleep. Amen. That's what all the doctors say. Like, we don't care what that says. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. <laughs> and so we get up at 2 in the morning. And again, it was just like, what is happening? I'm so confused. It is amazing, though, strong leadership and strong parenting can encourage you and make you do something at the same time without, without condemning you, without legalizing you, and without hurting you. They can do it with a smile. Now, you cannot give what you don't have. So oftentimes, if you're under spiritual leadership where they have no prayer life, they're angry because they don't have it. And people who don't have anything are angry. But people who have stuff are quite confident in what they have. So these men and women had a prayer life, and they were able to give it to me. So be careful when you step into and you let go of cool parenting that you got something to give or else you will hurt them. You will hurt them because you don't got it. And you're passing on dysfunction and abuse. So make sure you do get it. But they had it. And they're like, we're praying. We're going to hear God. And it was like, we hear God at 2 in the morning. You're going to hear God right now. And I heard God. At 2 in the morning, scriptures, presence would come. By 3 o'clock, I was so full of the Holy Spirit, I couldn't go back to sleep. And that was a little bit disturbing. But that's the collateral damage of prayer. So one of my heroes, I got the chance to, to, to we're just talking. Is that cool? We just got the chance to hear, Pastor Young E. Cho, anybody heard of Pastor Young E. Cho? Yeah. A couple of us, really? Pastor Cho, the largest church in the world. He just died last September. You're like, what? I forget, the older I get, I forget who dies and doesn't die. I had to be, is Pastor Cho still with us or is he with Jesus, you know? He, he, he died last, uh, last September. But in 1950, he started a church with like four people in South Korea. And, and it was an amazing story of literally his church is at the center of what is happening even in South Korea today, which is the exact opposite of post-Korean War and North Korea. And so South Korea is flourishing. It's wonderful. And a lot has to do with this man. Newspapers and, and Kia and every, I mean, all the car, everything just came out of Cho's church. Uh, just, just, yeah, I mean, his business group had like 300,000 people. It's just crazy. How do you have a business group of 300,000 people? I don't know. But I heard about Cho. I read about Cho. It's Prayer Mountain, 40,000 people praying 24-7. So a lot of our prayer things, prayer chains, that was just stolen from Cho. A lot of prayer stuff over the last 50, 60 years is just taken from Cho and what they did out of desperation. They had nothing. They had sickness. They had poverty. And so they needed God to move in their country and, and God moved. And so I was so pumped to hear Cho. I remember I'd get in. I had my friends. We had this conference time. I saved a bunch of seats. Someone took out my seats. I was like, could get my seats, right? You got to get your seats. And, and so Cho comes in and, and Cho, he, it's the first time I saw him, he's just like very, very South Korean, very just quiet, you know. And I'm charismatic. I'm used to my, 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 my leaders being a little charismatic, being prophetic, having some energy, you know, having a little bit of like, hey, what's up? Woo! Good to be in church. That's just what I'm used to. Cho is just like, I kid you not, I could talk forever. I need to preach. Cho, he gets up. 
and his wife's a trained concert pianist. So I remember being in church, church like 6,000 people there at the conference. I'm right in the front row. I'm just ready for Cho. Let's bring it. I'm a prayer guy. Let's go. Now, again, beast, my leaders were making me. I was, I pray in two to three hours in the morning. I was like, go, let's go. Cho, what do you got? Let's go. It's got to be more than the rice that brings the revival, okay. Give me the revelations. Give me, I'll take some rice, but what's the revelation here that you got? And his wife gets up, does like a, a, literally a 20 minute like Beethoven concert. I'm just like, what is going on? This is not a good start to this prayer meeting, this faith meeting. I want some fresh revelation like I've never heard before. Well, Cho just stands there, gets up and greets everybody. And he just starts talking about pray and obey. And he starts telling these stories about having six people in a tent and a dog. And, and then you just pray, obey. And I was like, ah, right, cool, I'm pray, taking notes. Pray, obey. And it kind of rhymes, so it's a little cheesy. You're like, hey, you might want to get something new because it's like, pray, obey. <laughs> it's a little, it translated shows a little cheesy, you know. Pray, obey. It's like, okay, Sunday school? Is this like, is this Sunday school? And then he starts, keeps telling stories. And I'll be honest, if Cho said pray and obey one more time, I was just getting ready to leave. I'm like, this is, this is just Sunday school. This is just this silly. You know, the concert thing, I can look past. But piano, but, but the pray, obey. He's telling story after story after story. Pray, obey, pray. Oh, but we prayed. We needed money. We prayed and obeyed. We needed a building. We prayed and obeyed. There was sickness. We prayed and we obeyed. There was some issues in the church. We prayed and obeyed. There were some governmental issues. We prayed and obeyed. Threats from North Korea. We prayed and obeyed. We prayed and obeyed. We prayed. And all of a sudden, something shifted in, 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 in the room with, with prayer. I started, I started, I started, whew, I started wanting to pray. I, I, prayer, prayer gets you involved in what's going on. But prayer takes you from spectator to participator real quick where you start to, to whew, it starts to become real when the revelation of prayer takes you to another level. And he started, he started talking about prayer in a, in a very, see the Bible is stories. It's not just theology. It's people's lives being transformed by the living God. And so what I didn't understand and what I was judging Cho by was he wasn't blowing me away with fresh revelation, but he was blowing me away by the revelation in his life which is foundational to testimony and so I didn't know it but there was a ground swell of clout that and he started talking about he prays six to eight hours a day and all of a sudden he went into fifth gear and started talking about the simplicity and the awesomeness because he could take no credit for a God that he prayed to because prayer wasn't works prayer was this divine this divine romance between heaven and earth and if you open up earth heaven wants to invade and his prayer life was revealing a God in heaven ready and willing to move on behalf of every human need. But it was faith and prayer that was going to access heaven. The whole place turned into a prayer meeting. And prayer, prayer is birthed and prayer. It's prayer in this story that moves the hand of Jesus. I never saw this before, but it's prayer. It's prayer that started the ministry of Jesus. It's the prayer of Mary. It's the prayer of her concern that moves Jesus into ministry. Make no mistake about it. He's sovereign and this is a not to get into anthropomorphic uh, uh, theology of who God is. Because he, he, what that means is, is it's humans trying to figure out who God is. Remember in, 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 with Moses and God, God wants to kill everybody. And Moses is like, don't do it. And God's like, all right, fine, I won't do it. But yet God changed his mind, but he doesn't change his mind because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he doesn't change. He, he's consistent. He, didn't change. he knows he's outside of time. And so we try to figure out with human understanding who is this God that doesn't change his mind but seems to be subject to human beings and prayer? Uh, hold on. It, 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 but that, that's, that, that's something that, that, that is interesting but cannot distract us from the theology of what's really going on because some things are just above our pay grade and there is a mystery to how eternity collides with time. And all we need to really, really understand is that he came. He's in the, in the will of the Father. Jesus shows up. He's ever present. He has a plan. He's going to die for humanity. He's going to be raised. And yet it is the prayer of a mom that moves Jesus. It is prayer that triggers the ministry of Jesus Christ on planet earth. It's prayer. 
Prayer is about to trigger a move of God in your life. Are you ready? Church, are you ready to pray? We're going to pray, but not out of might, not out of strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. It was prayer. And I love this. I love this. I love this. I mean, we're talking about thousands of years, thousands of prophecies, the Old Testament, the law, the children of Israel, all of this, all of the Old Testament has taken place, all of this, the time eternity, waiting for the coming of the Messiah. We just celebrated Christmas, right? I mean, the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, Mary, oh, the Son of God, come and form, come in flesh. This is it, this is it, this is it. He's about to start his ministry, and he's about to make wine. I don't know about you, but that's not how you start a business. That's not how you start a ministry. I remember us starting this church, and we door hung. We just got Facebook going. We did everything we could try to do to try to let everybody know it's happening, right? You got to put a big, you, I mean, you just got to make a splash. You got to go for it. You got to do something. Here's Jesus. After all eternity has been waiting for thousands of years, the coming of the Messiah, the King of Kings is going to come, and he's, he's going to come and save his people, and he shows up to a wedding and makes some wine, like, this is not exactly the splash you want if you're an entrepreneur, if you're ministry-minded, and you want to go bless people and help people. You don't start at a wedding making a food miracle, making wine. What does this tell us? That everything matters to Jesus. Everything matters. Everything, everything matters to Jesus. Everything, every concern, every thought matters to Jesus. If it matters to you, it matters to him. This was Mary's concern. This was not Jesus' concern. But all you need to understand, it was the concern of Mary that started and moved the hand of God. It matters. Quit thinking it doesn't matter. It matters. Someone say it matters. It matters. It matters. The clothes you wear, the bills you have, it matters. What you feel, it matters. Every, every thought, every hair on your head, every, everything in the past, everything you're looking at, everything you're planning, it matters. There's nothing that doesn't matter to God. If it matters to you, it matters to him. If it matters to them, it matters to him. We got to let go of does this really matter. It matters. If Jesus showed up, if, if heaven was awaiting, the angels were waiting, all of creation was waiting, and he shows up. He shows up to a wedding and makes some wine. It matters. And if it was the concern of a mom who said, Jesus, they have no wine, it matters to him. It doesn't matter. Oh, it matters. No one needs wine. we got to quit thinking about what's needed, what's wanted, and what's desired. We all have this scale right, of what you should pray about, what you should think about, what you should journal about, what you should talk to your wife about, what you should talk to kids about, what you should talk to God about. And Jesus is like, I showed up, I started my ministry making some wine because they ran out of wine. It's not even needed. I mean, it's not even needed at all. It's maybe an excess. And if Jesus showed up and made some wine for some, for some people who, who probably shouldn't even, I mean, let's just be honest, this doesn't make any sense. And Jesus is like, you know what? A lot of things don't make sense. Your desires and your needs shouldn't make sense. That's why you stop believing for miracles because it doesn't make any sense that you're still struggling with that unforgiveness and that depression and that lack of faith. It doesn't make any sense. But Jesus said, I don't need you to make any sense of it. It matters to me. I just want you to bring it to me in prayer. Just get praying. Get praying. Get praying. It was prayer that pushed Jesus into the ministry. It was prayer that pulled him. It was prayer. I don't need to understand it, but prayer works. I don't need to get it, but prayer works. It's prayer that started the miraculous signs of Jesus Christ. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer, prayer matters, it matters, it matters, it matters, it matters, it matters. The first context is a, is a, is a wedding. Put away the priority of concern. Put it away. Put it away, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It put, you stop, stop. It's, it's concerning. It, it, bring it to Jesus. Pray, pray. Could you imagine if you were John the Baptist? You've been waiting your whole life and you just baptized Jesus and he, he heard about him starting his ministry. And so you're John and you send someone to go check out the ministry of Jesus. Go, go, I want to go see if this is really Jesus. Because it seemed to be a concern of John. John's like, are you really the Messiah? Even though he was the Messiah. And he, but John was always like, are you the one? Are you, we just need to know, are you the one? Can you imagine if like, you send one of his disciples to go up to the wedding? Like, hey, how's the ministry going? And he's like, well, go tell John the Baptist. He turned some water to wine. You want me to go tell John he turned water to wine? That's... 
that's how it's going. That's how the ministry is going. <laughs> hey, John, he, he turned some water to wine. John's like out in the wilderness going, I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. I still don't know if he's, I mean, I thought I knew, but he's making water. What if you were trying to get the update on Jesus' ministry? Because, I mean, let's just be honest. I would expect Jesus' first miracle to be like to clear out an orphanage, you know, to clear out a children's hospital. We want to get things going with a bang. That would be awesome. Show up to Galilee and just like heal everybody, right? I mean, he eventually gets there, but his first miracle is a food miracle, like wine, you really want this in the Bible, that you turn some water to wine for some people at the end of a feast? That will mess with your theology. We just get so used to it, right? We just get so used to it. Oh, he turned water. No, he t it's a food miracle, and it's not even water. Like water would have made sense to a bunch of people, you know, lost in the wilderness, and Jesus shows up and starts his ministry, and he's like, here's water. I'm the living water. He doesn't even do that. He shows up for some people who shouldn't be drinking anymore. It's not water. It's not necessary. It doesn't, you do not need wine to live. I know some of you argue that. <laughs> but you do not need wine to make it through a week or a day. You do not need wine to survive. And yet, Jesus' first miracle is turning water to wine. That's teaching me he cares. We have this, this, this priority of what really matters. <laughs> and Jesus is teaching us it matters. It matters. I love John. He uses this word for sign. This is the beginning of the signs that Jesus does. It's the same word as work. This is incredible, and I don't have time to, 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 to fully just get into this, but, but John writes in a certain way. It's why he's not a part of the synoptic gospels. He kind of takes his own love journey here with Jesus, and he, he uses these words. He doesn't use sign and wonder. A lot of the miracles are woo. John seems to almost like kind of downgrade as he writes the miracles, and he sort of upgrades the revelation of Jesus, sort of writing in a way that tells us when you're around Jesus, everything was a sign. When you were just drinking water with Jesus, you, you sort of realize that in the beginning was the word. That's why John starts his gospel. Because his revelation of Jesus was that everything is awesome. Everything is just a sign. The sign itself is helpful. It's nice. It's cute. It's awesome. But it's a sign that points to what it's all about. And so whether it was water to wine, whether it was just normal life, whether it was food, whether it was a fire, whether it was that when I cut myself, my skin just closes up. It's all, a, whether it was a, a, a leper, whether it was a, a, a miracle that everybody saw or no one saw, it was all a sign. It, the sign itself is not a, a wonder. It's not amazing, even though it can be interpreted as wow. Everything pointed to to the wow that was in Jesus. That's why this miracle revealed the glory of God. Why? Because it was a sign that the disciples saw the sign. They turned and they saw for the first time the glory of God. The glory was not in the miracle. The glory was in the one who caused the miracle to happen. Are you hearing me? So John is writing this. Everything that Jesus did was awesome. Why? Because he was awesome. Everything he spoke was altogether wonderful and beautiful. Why? Because he was wonderful and beautiful. Don't get caught up in the level and scale of the miracles. They all pointed to the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, the Son of God, Jesus. It was, it was a sign. It was a work. And everything he did was a work that pointed to himself. John did not want us to get caught up in the level of miracles because that's where my brain goes right off the bat. Why didn't he heal like, why didn't he clear out a leper colony? That would have been awesome. Just like, whew, clear it out. And he's like, no, what he did is he revealed who he was. Don't get caught up in the level of miracles. Don't get caught up until Jesus heals 50 cancer patients. We can't have revival. He's not really a healer. The idea is that anything from headache to ankle to neck to presence to just all of it points to the one. Points to the one. There's many people that will see miracles and not believe in Jesus because it's supposed to be a sign. But if we think, man, if Jesus could clear out a hospital, if we could see more creative miracles, they'll see Jesus. It's still a sign. It's still a sign. Your testimony is a sign. Prayer is a sign. The presence of God is a sign. All of it points to Jesus. And when Jesus reveals his glory, you believe. That's what causes you to believe is when you see him. 
That's what causes the world to believe. Amen. So he revealed his glory. The first miracle, oh man, I, I wish I had a week, a month to just talk about this. Why wine? The wedding feast of the lamb, the wine, the wine. Jesus talking about wine. We're going to be married to Jesus in heaven. The bridegroom, the, the, the wedding, the feast. He's the, he's the, we're the bride. He's the bridegroom. The wine. The wine. Why, why wine, Jesus? Why, why show up to a heavy world? Why show up in the middle of Rome's rule and, and make some wine? Does it Tell me that in the middle of this heavy season that he wants to be your wine. That he wants to show up and have a celebration. He wants you to be glad. He didn't want you to be heavy. Christians are not meant to be heavy. Oh, the Roman rule. Do you know about Caesar? He knows about Caesar. And he says, you know what? I want to get this thing started at a wedding that we don't need and make some wine that we don't need. But I want to show you that I bring, when I show up, I'll be your wine. I'll bring joy. I'll bring gladness. I'll bring happiness. I'll bring fulfillment. I'll put a smile on your face. God wants to break the spirit of heaviness over this region, over your life, and say, I know you don't need it, but I want to show up and get things started with a little bit of happy, a little bit of glad, a little little bit of joy. I want to bring some wine back into your life. Now we fight it. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need it. And Jesus said, you know what? You're carrying the weight of the world. And I don't want you to carry the weight of the world. I don't need my church walking around talking about how heavy. I know everything's heavy. I want you to be happy. He wants us to be happy in the middle of heavy. He would not have started out his ministry making wine. We would, we, we, I wouldn't be reading this if this wasn't in the Bible and canonized scripture. I have a hard time preaching. So the Son of God, the one who saved our sins, turned water to wine. If we'd never heard the story, we'd be like, I need to find a new religion. Like, this, he what? Yeah, because he cares. He loves you. And he wants to, first of all, because you know what we do? We say, once I get in shape, once I get my budget, once I get, once I get, once I get, once I get, then what? Happiness. He goes, no, 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 we're going to take the happiness. I'm going to drop some wine in your spirit right now. And then that is going to get you going into everything that you need to get going. Someone needs to say amen. amen. He wants to be your happy. He wants to be your joy. Before you get healed, before you get that business going, he wants to be your happy today. He wants to be your happy. He wants to be your joy. Pray. Pray, 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 and obey. Put it into action. Put it into action. Mary comes over to the servants and says, whatever he says to you, do it. Pray, 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 and obey. Obey. Put it into action. Once you've prayed, it's now time to stop praying. The reason most Christians you meet all the time what are you doing? Just, oh, just praying, man. Pray for me. Thanks, man. Hey, my uncle's like, would you pray? Pray. I'm not here to fully mock it. I'm just here to shed some light on the fact that we probably aren't praying. That's why we're always praying. You know what I mean? And so we're always. But once you've prayed, you no longer want to pray about it. You ever been in a prayer meeting for four hours? I have. And you're like, I'm done. I want to obey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been in circles of prayer or, you know, talking and planning and getting counsel, reading the books, getting educated. We went to Hillsong and I was a youth pastor for 10 years and I talked to all the churches and the pastors. Then it just came time to start the church. I didn't want to. I wanted to keep praying. But when God takes you from prayer to obedience, he says it's now time to put it into action. Stop praying about it. Stop talking about it. Stop blogging about it. Does anybody blog still? Just stop Facebooking about it. Stop, stop. Do it. It's time to do it. It's time to put it into action. You prayed the prayers. You've got the counsel. You've got the scripture. You've got it. It's now time to do it. It's time to put it into action. Whatever he says to you, do it. Stop thinking that we have got to do it. So many times we want, hey, you know what? You know what the church should do? You know what, you know what our, you know what we should do? You should do. Whatever he said to you, do it. You'll never get a consensus of everyone in your world going in the same direction. That's going to kill you. You know what we all should do? We should all like love each other and be awesome. Okay, good luck with that. But whatever he says to you, 
you should do it. Yeah, yeah. You know what we should do next Thanksgiving? Not fight and be happy. Okay, good luck with that. But you know what? If he tells you to do that, maybe you should do that. Maybe you should show up with a better attitude, a better spirit, and more creativity. You know what? I wish we were a family that played games. Well, maybe you need to learn the game, and maybe you need to show up with the game, and maybe you need to teach the game, and maybe you need to teach your family how to get along through a game, and maybe you should collectively learn and teach how to communicate. See, you're going to die on the vine if it's a we. Whatever he says to you, to you, do it. Put it into action. Put it into action. Go after it. This is your year to pray and obey. And once you get the word, go. Do it. Move on it. Put it into action. Put it into action. Put it into action. You know, the hard part is he often tells us something that doesn't seem to make a difference with what's needed. There's a contradiction. It's not connected. Wouldn't really make a difference. We have a water solution for a wine problem. That's why it matters. That, 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 that's why, that, that's why it matters. You, you're going to think it doesn't matter. Well, I'm going to bring a game to Thanksgiving that's going to change my family. That's the worst idea I ever heard. Yeah, because it's a water solution to a wine problem. Everything in life is going to look like a water solution to a wine problem. That's why God will send a prophet. God will send a pastor. God will take a Mary. You don't think Mary was anointed for crazy? She got pregnant by God. She was a teenager, but the Holy Spirit hovered over, and the seed of heaven got in there. And she gave birth to Jesus Christ. So when she came, he said, whatever he says, you do it. I mean, whatever. Trust me, an angel showed up a bit ago, 30 years ago, and told me I was about, blessed are you, Mary. Blessed? I don't know how blessed I am to walk around not married, pregnant by God. That sounds like a burden. Yeah, oftentimes a blessing is a burden. And so when, a, when Mary comes and says, hey, whatever, I mean, whatever, I mean, whatever, it's because we are going to think it's crazy. It doesn't matter. And so God will send someone to say, do it, do it. This is your time. I'm learning this, but I do have a little bit of anointing for crazy. God sent me to 40 countries around the world, preaching the gospel to not every tribe and tongue, but I've been to Indonesia. I've been been to Japan, I've been to Africa, and I'm telling you all it did was grow my faith that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. He's Savior of the world. He can do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. We've lost some of this faith. I don't recommend this, but we used to show up as wildlammers to the airports with no money. I don't believe in that, but I'm telling you, God would move got to get tickets to people. I'm telling you, we went to villages. There's no churches. There's no money. Checks would show up. When you need God to move, there's some kind of raw faith that says, God, you have to move. God, you have to move. You have to move. Mary said, whatever he says to you. I mean, she probably, if you stare into the eyes of the mother of Jesus, I mean, my mom's got some fire. Mary, I mean, I don't know what that look would have been. But some of you need to get that look. And God's gonna give you that look so you can tell your kids with some authority. Quit trying to be cool with some authority of what God has established in your life. See, when I tell my kids to pray, it's because I pray. And I say, Jude, where's your Bible? Trent, where's your Bible? <laughs> get up and pray. Get to church. Love people. Why? Because I'm doing it. Mary did it. That's the transference of ministry. That's the transference of healthy ministry. Whatever he says to you, don't pray about it. Journaling's over. Consensus is over. Pastoral counsel is over. Facebook blogging is, oh, it's time to do it. Whatever he says to you, just, just, just move heaven and earth and just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. It doesn't matter. It matters. It doesn't matter. It, ma it, it matters. It's water. We need wine. So it's water. We need wine. It's a board game at Thanksgiving. We need family restitution. It matters. It's a text message. I need to be, I need more money. I need more 
it matters it matters it's water and he needs water he said I need some water give him some water I know it doesn't heal the wine problem but he's about to turn it he's gonna turn the water to wine that's why prophecy is wine prophecy is wine because it's the God part of life I see God moving there's his hands on you you're anointed there's a gift inside of you there's fresh faith coming there's wisdom come what me yeah God's moving on you. he's gonna use you more get your faith up 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 God God's going before you he's opening doors he's closing door he's moving right now see that's the wine part of it we don't prophesy the water part because you can do it we don't prophesy oh I see you before a white porcelain throne oh it's a toilet see you something is in your hand it's a scrubby you're scrubbing toilet save the lord oh the toilets of the nations no we don't prophesy that because you can do it so do it we don't prophesy going to church because it's water it's not the wine but he's going to turn it getting up in the morning reading the bible giving inviting people to church preaching the gospel worshiping praise it's all water it's not the wine but he takes the water and he turns it into wine but he needs the water see everybody's talking about wine everybody's prophesying about wine everybody's facebooking about wine everybody's talking about wine this is old school there's just some old just some dirty servants just filling up the water pot with water everyone else is we don't have wine talking about wine prophesying about wine and there's some servants old school just pulling up their sleeves just filling the water pot with water it's tiring fill and they said why are you doing it because he said to do it he said to do it he said to do it i'm just forgiving i'm just loving i'm just worshiping i'm just i'm just churching i'm just parenting i'm just forgetting i'm just reading i'm just worshiping i'm just loving god i'm just sharing my testimony this is us why why are you doing it he said to do it this is old school this is dirty old obedience this is just like ah. this is gritty like i don't know he just said it i'm gonna do it all it was was mary saying whatever he says to you do it and they're like okay jesus didn't even pray over the water he didn't even bless the water nothing just fill the water pot of water church bible vulnerability faith vision boards planning goals repentance forgiveness worship read my bible parenting my kids preaching the gospel inviting people to church it's just good old-fashioned what are you doing he said do it it's in the bible it's in the bible it's in the bible i don't know he said it he said it i just i'm just doing it i'm filling it up yeah but we need wine i know but this is what he told me to do just fill it up he said if you fill it up i'll turn if you read it i'll turn if you forgive i'll turn if you worship i'll turn it if you forgive
until we pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. I need to know some people, if this is you, just come on up. God's going to birth prayer. This is your season. This is your season. Receive this throughout this place. But if this is your season, you know God's calling you to pray. I just want my team to come up here and lay hands on you and just believe that even in this moment, God's going to birth prayer. He's going to birth prayer. He's going to birth some prayer. Prayer is about to unlock the thing that you're up against. You've never seen prayer as moving the hand of God because you've always believed he's sovereign. Oh, he is sovereign. Oh, he holds the universe, but he has partnered with mankind. And he said, some things will not happen unless my people pray. Unless they pray. Unless they pray. Obedience. Some of you are going to put some things into action. You know, there's some things you've been thinking about, praying about. But this is your season of action. Come up here. I don't want some men of faith, some women of faith. If you've got some faith to put some things in action, I want you to come up here and just lay hands on people. Because I know there's some people that say, man, I'm worried about procrastinating my whole life. We live in an age of administration, which means we might administrate ourselves out of destiny right into our deathbed. And God said, I understand you have a spirit of excellence. You have a spirit, like I get that. But there's a spirit of faith and action that I want to put upon you in this season because it is time to move. It's time to go. It's time to act. If that's your prayer, obedience, put it into action. One last thing. Where did they get the water? They didn't have a, a spigot. They didn't have a hose. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. He expected them to have faith to figure it out. If that's you, just come up. You just gotta, God's gonna put some faith on you. Guess what? It's all right, it's all right. You're gonna figure it out. You're gonna figure it out. You're gonna figure As you begin to move, you're like, hold on, there's some water over there. If we just, we're gonna get the water, we're gonna bring it back. God's left this part up to me. I'm gonna figure out how to get the water to the water pot. He would not have told me to fill the water pot if I wasn't called and anointed to find the water, to fill the water pot, to put the miracle in motion. It's time, it's time, it's time. God's going to anoint and give you faith to figure it out. He wants to break the spirit of fear in Jesus' name right now.
opening doors, closing doors. He's your guardian. He's your father. He's your keeper. He's got you. Let it be real. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Prayer is going to fill your car. Becky, you want one of these? You got a Bible? You got one of these? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I need one other person. Anybody else need? Need a prayer hookup, Bible, a journal? Anybody? Anybody? We got you. We got you. We got one coming right now. Hey, we're going to get out of here. We're going to finish this story. I'm not done. Don't miss next week. Be praying. Be obeying. God's about to do a miracle through your life, saying, I'm ready to move. Are you willing to pray? I'm ready to move. Are you ready to pray? I'm ready to speak. Are you ready to pray? I'm ready to heal. Are you ready to pray? I'm ready to restore. Are you ready to pray? He's got to teach us to pray. To pray. If you need some prayer, come on up. We love you. See you next week.